Hi guys, welcome to the final one of the videos for your first exam, uh, if you're following along for your GCC exam, obviously that is, uh, in 2022. So this one's going to go out uh, a week before the exam. Uh, I'll also be doing some videos on quotes and stuff like that. Oh, sorry, the dog's tired. So I got too scared of those Five Nights of Freddy things. I hated them, that last one. So my class have told me this time I've got, well, I should try Minecraft, which I've heard of at least, the last ones I hadn't heard of. I haven't really got any experience of it. I don't really know much about it, apart from like little bits. Um, so we'll see how it is. At the moment it says vanilla. I assume that's right. I don't, I've earned reward points. That's excellent news. I'm very pleased about that. Uh, right, so I don't, do I want to go to a dressing room? I don't really want to fiddle with settings. Uh, that seems fine. I don't really know what I'm doing there. Play. I don't have any friends or any worlds, and I don't know what servers is, so we'll go create new. Uh, I don't know what any of that means, so create new. Okay. You told me to do survival, so I do survival and difficulty normal. I don't know what that means. Uh, seed? Do not spill your seed upon the dusty grounds. That's a quote for you, Keen. I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do. I don't know, let's see how we go. I'm gonna try and teach about RE and build a church. That's my plan. I don't know how easy it is to build a church or how easy it is to build general things, but we'll see how we do. So the first topic that, they've done really a lot AQA of cutting stuff out of this uh, next exam, this first exam. That's good because you've had to learn less. Unfortunately, we've covered a lot of this stuff. So weirdly, you've got to sort of forget stuff. So certain stuff that's difficult. Oh, during online play, you may may be exposed to chat messages. I'm playing online. I didn't know that. Okay, well, let's hope no one's rude to me. I didn't know I was playing online. I don't know how this works. Okay. It's snowy here. Am I going to freeze? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, um, for example, communion... Um, isn't gonna isn't gonna come up as sort of like a default topic, okay? So I've got that to move around and that to jump, that's fine. Um, so communion, having the bread and the wine, isn't gonna come up as its own sort of topic, and that's sort of good. Uh, oh, okay, that's that punches things, and I can punch the snow away. All right, so let's clean up some snow while we do that. Uh, oh, this is almost. Oh, I thought it was gonna be a little crucifix. Uh, can I punch that one? If I can get rid of that one, it will be a crucifix. Oh, I have a thing. Ah, oh, look, little cross for Jesus. Oh, I can hit them with the stick. <gasps> What's that? Oh, uh, that looks like a polar bear. Hmm. Oh God, I don't want to get eaten by a polar bear straight away. Um. So one topic that they have put on the exam pre-release list is the sacraments. Now, what's ironic is they they put the sacraments on there, but they've said not communion which is the bread and the wine thing, even though communion is one of the sacraments. So I'm guessing they won't ask specifically about communion as a question, but they expect you to know the other sacraments, I guess. Oh, what's that? I don't know. A, a rabbit? Looks like a rabbit. Let's go and see the rabbit. The bear was a bit scary, but I can see a rabbit. Hello, rabbit. Hey, mate. Well, you got red eyes. <gasps> what's that? Oh, I don't know. Hit it. What's that? That's one's house. Rabbit, if, is this your house, mate? All right. Oh, that was his window. Oh, rabbit, mate. I am so sorry. I didn't realise that was your window, man. You've got a nice house. That's so good that you own a house. I'm really proud of you. I can only, re you know, just about afford a house. And you're a rabbit. Oh. Um, no, cool, I've got a house. Well, that should keep me warm. Um, so the seven sacraments uh, are... A sacrament in general, actually, I should probably explain, is an outward sign of, of God's love, okay? So an outward sign of God's inner grace. So God loves you, so you want to show it in some sort of way. What are these things? What's this? Punch it? No, doesn't do anything. Punch that? Doesn't do anything. Right. Uh, use. Left trigger. Coarse dirt. I can mix dirt and gravel. Okay, this is why I build things, is it? But at the moment, I can't build anything. I'm guessing because I don't have anything apart from 
my pile of dirt I found. How do I... I can place my dirt. Oh, I place my dirt in the window, so at least it's not letting in so much cold air. Perfect. Right. Rabbit, you didn't have a door. You've got red eyes, Rabbit. Ooh. You're kind of scary. Um, I do like my house, though. I will stay in here. I need to make a door somehow. Um, so there are seven sort of signs that you love God. There are seven things you can do to show your love towards God. Maybe I can make this into like an ice church. How do I pick up ice? No, that just knocks the ice over. I could make a big cross on here. Maybe I'll pick up dirt and make a big cross on here. Well, it looks like there's a hole over there as well. That could be a cave. <gasps> Rabbit, there's a friend for you over there. Hello, Rabbit's friend. Do you want to come in the house, Rabbit? Come on. Anyway. Um, so the first uh, sacrament, and we're going to talk more about that in a second, is baptism. Baptism is joining the faith, washing away sin. Um, often done to babies, and we'll talk about all that in a second. So, Because we're going to do more about baptism, I won't mention that now. Uh, another sacrament uh, that happens earlier in someone's life. Okay, there's my house. How do I remember where my house is? Um, I'm worried I'm going to lose my house. Oh, if I get more mud and I'll make a mud... Oh, that's a little cave as well. Okay, ha <gasps> Rabbit! There's so many rabbits everywhere. This is lovely. Okay. Oh, another cross. Look at that. Another Christian cross. Jesus is everywhere with us today. How odd. Christian cross. Jesus. Signs. Um, another uh, form of, um, commu uh, of sacrament that happens when you're young is confirmation. So confirmation happens when someone's about 13 years old, normally. It's like, um, it's confirming the baptism. So um, a lot of you, when I've taught people in the past, will be like, oh, I was christened when I was young, I haven't been to church since. Well, then you haven't been confirmed. They haven't confirmed your baptism. Normally around 12, 13 years old, you confirm the baptism. Like A lot of baptisms happen when the person is a baby, and the baby doesn't understand, like, what is going on so the baby doesn't understand what is going on how can it confirm that it wants to be a christian so okay right i've got all this stuff now how do i get on the house and build because i'm thinking if i build like a big tower of mud on the house and i'll be able to spot it from a mile away just got to work out how to get on the roof um so that's confirmation confirmation happens when you're about 13 years old ah, ha, 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 ha. right build that that worked. Jump and place. 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 Um, a later one, a sacrament you might have later is marriage. So you get married, and that is a sign to God that you uh, you're showing your love to God. Ah, how do I get down? I haven't thought this through. I haven't thought this through. Crafting. No. Inventory? That's the same. Hmm. We'll have a think while we're up here. I might just need to eat my own tower. Is there a way down? Oh, that looks deadly. Emote. I don't seem to know what that is. Change emotes? Well, I don't know what any of that is. That. Equip. Does that help? I don't know what that did. What was this? I'm sort of... There's a little man in the corner doing something. Anyway, marriage is the joining of couple in God's eyes. In the themes paper, you'll write more about marriage. Marriage will be more uh, on theme A. Relationships. They won't ask like a 12-mark question about marriage. Well, they could ask a 12-mark question about different sacraments. You might have to compare marriage to one of the others. I would... I think that's a very mean question because they haven't suggested you have to learn all the sacraments so I, I, I wouldn't suspect them to do that but they could other sacraments are, are ones we talk about less so there's um, ordination now, ordination might seem like a weird word okay I've just got to eat my whole tower have I at least this way I can get down safely eat my tower yum 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 no I'm not really eating am I <sighs> right that didn't work so how high can I... Oh, that worked. Right. Oh, you can build like a little crucifix. Ah, hang on. Build like a crucifix. Oh, no, it's not. It's just going to be a T. Hmm. Hmm. Hello, rabbit. Oh, you look like a black and white rabbit. You're different. I like you. Right. Oh, let me do my jumping trick again. Jump. Oh, no. 
Jahum. 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 Right. Okay. And if I put... No. That. Right. And then I eat this... Oh. And if I eat this one again... Yum. 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 Okay. Yeah. The start of my little church. Perfect. Um, I mean, I'm not a Christian in real life, but as an RE teacher, it's nice to make a weird ice church, I suppose. Uh, so if I was going to have an ordination, I was going to become a priest or vicar, and I suppose building a church is, is sort of perfect for that, okay? I'm going to become a priest or vicar. Uh, reconciliation uh, is another sacrament, and that is asking for forgiveness. So if in, this was my little church, uh, I might have here a little confession booth where I would sit in this side and say, like, oh, I'm so sorry for my sins, and the, the priest would sit in this side and be like, do seven Hail Marys, don't do it again, and I'd be like, yeah, soz about that, boss. Um, and that would be all fine. We'd make friends again afterwards. Uh, I don't think he'd actually say soz about all that. No, I don't think you would say soz about all that, boss. But, you know, you get what I would do. And the other one is anointing the sick. Anointing the sick is placing holy oil on a dying person. So when someone's dying, you, you often um, know in advance, um, like they're going to pass away soon. Uh, so you would have them marked with holy oil, uh, often on their forehead, uh, and it's to help their journey into the afterlife, a sort of final part of their journey. Now, those are the seven sacraments, okay? Eucharist is um, the communion, eating the wafer, having the eating the bread, having the wine. Won't come up as its own individual question, but it's worth knowing the word, especially in case they try and do something tricky with like well, the one mark question. They could be a real pain and be like, which one of these like other things is not, like they could be like, which one of these is a role of the church or put you, Christian, as a trick answer? Something like that. I can imagine them doing that to be a pain. So it's worth knowing, but you don't need to have any more details. And Eucharist or communion is the bread and the wine. Baptism is joining the church, okay? So when you're a little kid, is the sun going down? Oh, no. Will I freeze at night? I don't know. Okay. Jump. Oh, missed that one. Jump. Okay, I'm getting... This isn't it. Oh, that's quite dark. Right. Mm, I don't love it. In, love it in here. Oh, there's an outward. Oh, that's that's deeper than I thought. Oh. oh, oh. Um. So the 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 sacrament that they're going to ask about almost specifically, I imagine, would be baptism in some form. Okay. So baptism is joining the church, okay? Baptism is joining the church. In the UK, we'd often call it a christening, okay? We'd often call it a christening. Okay, where's my church? There's my little church. <sighs> so I asked my year sevens what the first things I'd need was, and one of them said, fine. All right. You, your friend? Oh. We cool? What's that? Is that a snake? Ow! Okay, we're not cool. Ow. They don't want to be friends. Oh, there's like lights over there. Is that like a town? Oh, a town, a town, a town. Ah! Oh no, more gremlins. Oh, golly gosh. Oh, my lord. Um, right, what do I do in the town? Uh, rescue me. Keep me safe. How do I ask for help? Oh, I've got... I'm on fire. I'm smoking. Oh, this is awful. What's that noise? Are you guys pretty nice? Oh, oh, oh. Houses. Uh, oh, no. Left uh, use. Oh. Uh, okay, mate. I'll be honest. There's gremlins after me, and I'm just going to hang out in your house. Wake villager. Hello, mate. Can I sleep in... Oh, I was going to ask him to sleep in your bed. Um... I'll be honest, guys. I was going to build a church. I'm going to try and baptise all these people. That, seem, that seems like the sensible thing to do. I'm just going to hang out in this house because I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, he's got a box. <gasps> he's got things I can have. Hello. Do you mind if I have these? Hang on. Let me wake him up. Can I have your stuff? Oh, I can trade. He wants... I don't know what any of this means. He wants... Fish? I will find fish for you. I'm going to try and sleep in your bed. No, right, hang on, let me wake him up again. Sleep in your bed. <laughs> Stole your bed. Um, so, in the UK we call it a christening, and it's one of the seven sacraments. 
baptism is probably the most common that actually most Christians take part in outside of marriage, I would say. And we generally divide it. Why is that noise? What was that? Why are you on fire? Ow. Oh my lord, there's so many people. Ow. Villagers, help me. There's ca there's cows. Ow. This really stings. Oh, door. Right. Okay. Is this like a sauna? What's that? Smoker? Oh. Oh, cows bums. Oh, whoops. I put mud in there. I can smoke the meat in there. Amazing. Right, anywho. Um... I was hanging in this house for a little bit longer. I don't know how to get health back. I must have a potion or something. Or maybe food? Hmm. I'll have to find that second. So, infant baptism and believer's baptism. Infant baptism happens when the person is a ch That was a freaky noise. Ow. Okay, I've always run out of all my health. I thought that was the cow door. So, where's the cow door? Is that the cow door? Oh, don't come in the house, cow. Oh. Now, are you okay? So, infant baptism have... Oh! Oh! This game's more scary than the Five Night Freddy one. How did you get in here? Well, it's a bit uncomfortable. I'm still on fire or something. I'm still smoking. And so are you. What do you want? You want a pink, a pink ball? I don't have any of this stuff, mate. I don't know what any of that means. Um, so, an infant baptism is, is what happens when someone's a child. I'm going to have to risk going out there. Okay. Respawn. Okay, I'm in that man's house. Okay, close the door. I'll stay here. Mr. Minson was shot by a stray. Was, so he's a stray like a stray dog. Okay, I can look at this man's box now. Okay, what are these? Potatoes. Excellent. Potatoes. Right. Um... So an infant baptism is when someone's a child or christening. You might, you know, classically see it. Person holding a small baby in their arms. Okay, quick move. Oh, quick move just moves it all. Beetroot soup? That looks like food. Oh, I'm holding the beetroot soup. Uh, what do I do? Mine with it? No. Drop it. Y use it. I just... So beetroot... Oh, there's arrows there, I think. Interesting. I don't know how to use the beetroot soup yet. Right, let's take more out of this box. So, you take the baby to a church, you have, and once we've built our church, we can do this with the baby. I know, why was quick move, why? That was it, quick move, quick move, quick move. So I've now got potatoes and coal. Uh, that's gonna help in the long term, somehow. So, what was I saying? Uh, infant baptism, you take the baby to a church, um, and you're gonna remove the original sin from the baby. What's the original sin? The original sin is the sin that everyone is born with. Where do we get this original sin? We. What is this thing? Are you bad or are you good? You are bad. Punch you. Punch you. Are you good? Okay, you seem chill. Okay. Everyone else seems fine. Guys, my church is over the hill. One day I will take you to the church and baptise you all. You're a ferret? What are you? Okay, there's some sort of ferret there. Okay. Right. Okay, at least I can hide in the village. Um, when it gets too cold. Um, where's my church? There's my church. Okay. Nice. Um, you place holy water on the child's head. So I can see some... Ow. Ow. I can see some water over here. So the, the, all water is potentially holy water. All you have to do is get a p priest or a vicar to bless it, okay? So as I'm building a church, I'm going to declare myself a priest or a vicar. And I'm going to go and bless this holy water. This is going to be my holy water. Can I pick up water? Uh... Yeah. Oh, it's pushing me backwards. Yeah. Jump in the water. Well, that's cool. Uh, mine the water. Oh, no, I just dug a hole. Hmm. I have to work out some way to pick up the water. Well, this is going to be my holy water. So I'm going to go and baptise myself in it. So I go under the holy water and I wash away the original sin. Whee! 
that was fun. Um, the original sin is a sin from Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned and their punishment was that all their descendants would have the original sin. Jesus dies and his death allows us to be cleaned of the original sin. Why is the water the thing that washes it off? Why is it not some sort of other liquid? Well, Jesus himself is baptised in water. However, he's not baptised as a baby, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um, other symbolic things they do during the baptism. Um, a candle is lit. Uh, the candle represents uh, Jesus. Oh, oh, what did I press there? Don't know. But I've now got my fist out, so I can punch things again. Punch, punch, punch. Um, punch, punch, punch. Oh. Okay. I don't know how to build more church. Um, a candle is it, and that represents God being sort of a guide. So in dark times, use a candle to guide you. Well, in dark times for a Christian, they have God as their guide. So God is the guide for them. What other things they do? Um, you're given God parents, okay? Uh, God parents are parents who will help raise you in a Christian way. So can I sleep in this bed? Sleep. Respawn point set. You can only sleep at night. Well, that makes sense. I do need some way to stop monsters getting in my house. Can I just sort of mud myself in? Okay, let's pick up more mud. Okay, so maybe when I get to sleep I just put mud in the door. Uh, how do I find mud? Okay, these ones move it there, so... Mud. 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 Oh, cosy! Well, that is pleasant. Okay. Um, other things they do at a child's baptism, they'll often say, they'll often pray. Why do they pray? They pray that the baby has a good life. Uh, they'll sing hymns to welcome the child into the church. It's about joining the church and coming together as part of the church. So you're joining the church and becoming part of it together. This is why you're joining in the first place, because you want to be part of the church. So this is sort of an infant you're bringing into it. Why do the baptism when they're an infant? Why not wait until they're older? Well, uh, there's a few reasons. One, you want them to grow up as part of the church. You want them to grow up and be a Christian. So you want to get them involved in the church as early as... Oh, what was that? That's the thing that was earlier. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. We're going to approach this bear? Hello. How... Are you friendly? Oh. Sorry. I wasn't trying to be rude. I just want to know if you're friendly. Okay, you seem chill. Oh. Is that your house? You live in the cave? I'll leave that cave alone then, mate. I'll go that way towards the trees. I really think I need a tree. It's very difficult to find out. What... My year seven's told me I needed trees and wood. Oh, I'm going really fast now. How did I go fast? What button did I press for that? That one? No, that was punch. That one's swap. No, that's the menu. That's the menu. That crouches me down. And that's jump. How did I just go fast? Oh, that one. Press that one in. Okay. Um, so, a baptism. Um, why do it as a baby? I, I can have that person grow up. Oh, my lord. I'm not going to get those trees. There's a big hole in the way. Oh, okay. Okay, there's trees. Let's go and see if I find those trees. Okay, that one makes me run. Um, I'd make them better. Go to Christian. Now... Catholics, and if you watched the last video, we talked about these sort of ideas very briefly. Catholics are very worried about babies' souls, okay? Because Catholics have quite a daunting view, uh, or many Catholics have a very daunting view of the afterlife. And that involves the idea that um, if a, a baby dies and it hasn't been baptised, it still has got sin upon it. And so that baby can't go to heaven. And many Catholics believe that baby would go into limbo. Limbo is a space between heaven and hell, a sort of nothingness. Uh, why is that a worry? Well, you want your baby to go to, to heaven, and it's a tragic thing if a baby was to die in the first place, but it'll be even more tragic if that baby was to die and couldn't get into heaven for Catholics. I mean, you know, I don't believe in heaven, so it wouldn't be as tragic in my mind. I wouldn't worry about it. My child isn't baptised, it's not something I'm concerned about, but for Catholics, that would be considered like a pretty big deal. Um, okay, how do I chop down a tree? Can I just punch it? Oh, hello. What are you? Are you a duck? A chicken? A chicken. Uh, okay. Right. Seems to be doing something. It's going dark. And I didn't fall over. So you don't obey the laws of physics. Right. Well, that's fine. Um, it's frustrating you don't obey the laws of physics. I was really hoping for a whole tree. 
they kind of float. Oh, maybe I need to chop this bit down as well because it's sort of connected. Is that how it works? Chop. And chop. What about if I chop that bit? That bit. Oh! Follow me here. No, you just don't listen to physics. Okay. We'll deal with that problem in a second. Um, so Catholics would definitely want to baptise their baby early because if the baby does have a tragic end when they're very young, they want that baby to go into heaven. They don't want it to go into limbo. So you make sure the baby is baptised at a very early age so it doesn't end up in limbo. Oh no, the sun's going down again. Right, I need to get back to my house. Which direction? There's another bear. Okay, so we're getting back to the house. And we're going to... Oh no, hang on, which one's the fast one? That was the fast one. And we're going to lock the door with mud and then we're going to go to sleep because I can sleep at night. Because the last time it was night time, those gremlins came and got me the strays. Where's my church? There's my church. See? Who's he? Well, they don't look nice. Oh, golly gosh. I don't like you. Right. They better not be inside my church. I mean, I feel a bit bad because I should be like welcoming them to the church. Oh, there's more up there. Ow! That hurt. Oh, you're horrible. Ow. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Oopsie. That didn't go well. Oh, no. Bounce, bounce. Well, that didn't go well. Um, so Christians generally, most Christians baptise their babies when they're young. Um, you may see videos of like Orthodox Russian Christians. That's why you might see occasionally videos of them doing the proper, sort of more aggressive uh, dipping style but this is all the idea that you get the baby baptized when they're very young so they grow up in the church um, they have godparents help them be raised as a christian you introduce them to religion really young however oh 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 no i don't have the mud anymore how do i oh golly gosh punch 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 oh he fell over night night what have i got here What's this? Oh, it's a bow and arrow. No, it's just an arrow. Right, I'm still smoking again. I don't know what that means. Um, can I just sleep now? You may not rest now, there are monsters nearby. Well, that's no good, is it? Oh! Punch! Punch, punch, punch. Ow! Punch, punch, punch. Hit you with the arrow. Surely the arrow hurts more than my fist. No, clearly not. Maybe I should have just punched him. I don't know. I'm hitting him with the arrow. It didn't seem to do anything. Um, so believer's baptism is a baptism done when someone's about 13 years old or older. Uh, and this is what we would often call a full immersion baptism, where the person is fully immersed in the water. They're dunked under the water. So when a baby's baptised, holy water is placed upon the head. The holy water washes away the sins. When an adult is baptised, they are fully put under the water. Why do you need to put them fully under the water? Well, partly they've got more sins. It's an odd way of doing it because surely just a dabble of holy water. It's all symbolic. But Christians like the idea that the full wash takes away all sins. But that's another symbol. It's washing away their old life and letting them start anew. Often Christians who do this when they're older are called born again Christians. Okay, Mr. Minton was shot by a stray. What's that? Okay, oh, that's some of the stuff. What is that? Place. Oh, that's my missing carpet. Arrow of slowness. Oh, I was slow. Oh, if I hit them with the bone, maybe that's like a club. Right. Any... Oh my god, there's so many of them. Why did I look outside? Can I go to sleep? No, there's monsters nearby. I really should have known that. Oh, hit them with the stick. So, Jesus was baptised in a believer's baptism. Oh, the stick doesn't seem to be hurting them very much at all. Oh. Right, back in the house. Right. How do I get my fist out? There, there's my punching fist. Okay, we'll go for punching. Oh. This game's not very much fun when you don't know how to stop them coming inside your house. Maybe I need to go to that village again. Yeah, that would be my plan. Oh, they're in the house still. Let me out the house. Oh, my lord. Where's the outside? There's the outside. Well, what was the run button? That one? Okay, run away. Oh, my lord. There's thousands of them. Oh, we're just going to hide underground. Surely this is a dangerous plan because even more things could be under underground. Oh, they're following me. Quick, into the... Ow. Oh, no, that's not safe. 
Ow. How am I going to get out of here? Oh, they're still following me. Oh! Well, you weren't going to come down in a hole with me. Punch, 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 punch. Punch, 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 punch. Punch, punch, punch. Um, so the believer's baptism happens when someone's 13. You baptise them like Jesus was baptised. You, you... Oh, I killed him. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I'm stuck at the bottom of a cave, though. I don't really know how to get out. Um, so you baptise them when they're about 13, uh, you, you, uh, or older. Under the water, full immersion baptism. This is how Jesus was baptised, okay? What the advantage of this baptism? Well, rather than... Oh, water down here. That's nice. Oh, look, there's like stalagmites, like a proper cave. Oh, this is lovely. It's quite pretty down here. I don't know what that is on the wall. Can I just punch it? Oh. I made it darker. Okay, remind me not to punch anything again. Can I just swim out of here? Maybe. How do I find my church again? Okay, let's just keep going deeper and see if we can find, like, treasure or, like, a map or a way out or a ladder. I don't think that's likely. Okay, light, though. Light. You are kidding me. What are you doing down here? Punch, 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 punch. Punch, 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 punch. Okay, this is working. Um, so, I'm trying to talk and punch him. So, why in an adult baptism? The person understands what they're doing. They can make a commitment that's more meaningful as a Christian. They're actually making an active decision. If I baptised my son, he would have no idea. He would just think we're going to play in some water. He is dumb, and I love him very much. Okay. Oh, what's that? A uh, t-shirt? And some... Okay. How do I put a t-shirt on? Put it on? No. Put it on? Yes. Oh, my little man's wearing a t-shirt now. Hang on, where's the inventory? Inventory. Ah, oh, he's got a t-shirt. A leather tunic. Unbreaking. And what's that? Rotten flesh. I don't know why I'd want rotten flesh. I am hungry. Do I eat the rotten flesh? Uh, that one. Eat. Yes. Okay. Ate the rotten flesh. I mean, I bet it's not great for me, but it seems alright. Oh, look, maybe there's a way out here. Excellent. This is all going excellently. Um... Another reason you might want to do a believer's baptism when they're an adult is because they have more sins to wash away. If you're not worried about the original sin and babies going to, to hell, which many Christians aren't, many Christians think God is omni-benevolent, uh, why would he send a baby to hell? They would rather do an adult baptism because an adult baptism means a person can be actively involved in it and they'll actually have sins to wash away by that point. By the time they're 13, they probably have done sins, okay? They've committed many sins that will need to be washed away. A quote that sums this up, and this is a great quote, um, is go and make disciples of all nations, baptise in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus says uh, at the Ascension when he goes up to heaven. This is called the Grand Commission. He gives uh, like his followers one final uh, sort of... What was that down there? Uh, oh. <gasps> oh, no, I don't like you. What are you? You've got loads of eyes. You're a spider. Okay. I'm going this way, spider. I'll back down where I came from. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come near you. I apologise. Oh, what are you? Ow, you're another one of those men. Punch, punch, punch. I lost my jacket, I guess, because when I keep waking up, I haven't got anything. That seems a nice jacket. Jesus gives this as his final message before he goes up to heaven. Okay, I'm in my house again. Can I sleep now? Yes, because there's no monsters around, because I got back to bed. Yes, cheating. Um, go and make disciples of many nations baptize in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit this is Jesus' final message before his ascension when he's taken up to heaven why is this you... they're all on fire oh are they like allergic to the sunshine oh that's nice so they all disappear can I go and get their stuff because they're dead now oh that's where I got the bone from I wonder where I got a bone from so he gave me a bone that one, that one, that one, that one, that one Okay, go and make disciples from any nations. Is Jesus' final message before he goes up to heaven? Why is that important? Well, if he said that before he went up to heaven, and it's a lot... Ow. Ow. Ow, who's she? Right, what are you doing down here? You guys are like actual bullies. Ow. Oh, my God. Right, okay. You need to... Why aren't you getting hurt if you're meant to be in the sunlight? Is it because you're underneath there? Maybe you're not actually in the sunlight yet. When the sun's fully up, you're in trouble, mate. 
I'm heading somewhere else because you're not nice. Okay. Uh, maybe if I put like mud in the door already, then when I come home, I can move it and I'll always have mud to put in the doorway to lock the monsters out. I am a genius. Uh, so Jesus clearly wants us to do this, make disciples of many nations, because it's like the final thing he says. But also, this links to another topic they're going to have in the exam. The exam is probably going to ask you about church growth. What's church growth? Church growth is when you increase the size of the church, okay? And that's important because, you know, you increase the number of members. Christians like this because the more members you have, the bigger the church is, more people are worshipping God. That's a sign of respect. That's all good. Oh, okay, there's rabbits. Rabbits are chill. You guys are nice. I like you guys. You guys are black and white rabbits. You're really cool. I like you a lot. Um, I don't know how to make friends with you, though. One day I'll make friends with you. I will have to try and capture you. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Okay, was the village up here? The village was around here somewhere. Uh, I have done absolutely nothing. Oh, I found those trees, didn't I? Oh, there's some trees. Okay, we'll cut down these trees and we'll see what we can make out of wood. That would be useful. My children told me wood was a useful thing, so make wood. Um, so you want to grow the church, okay? So we're going to make disciples of many nations. Partly we're going to go around baptising people, but we're baptising our children and raising them as Christians. That's a good deed to do. How else can we expand the church? Well, that is evangelism and missions. So evangelism is literally the word to spread the religion, okay? To spread the faith, okay? To evangelise, to spread the word of God to everyone else. This is a useful tactic. Is this working? Oh, look at that. I've got so much more wood now. This is perfect. Much better tactic. And all the leaves just stay floating there. Oh, that looks a bit silly. Oh, things are falling down. Are they falling to pieces now? Am I going mad? No, stuff's falling. Oh, maybe it just takes time to fall over. Maybe if I just remove one log, it would have all fallen over. Maybe I rushed it. I don't know. Okay, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Good old tree. Okay, so we've got some wood now. Let's go back to the church. Where's the church? Oh, where's the village? Is that the village? Yeah, that was the village. Let's go to the village and see if everyone's all right there. Maybe they got attacked by zombies again. Or monsters, whatever they were. Monsters, it said. That one in the cave looked like a zombie to me, though. I don't know what the strays are. Um, so evangelism is spreading the faith. You might have seen Jehovah's Witnesses doing this. Jehovah's Witnesses coming to your house... Uh, knocking on the door and trying to convert you to Christianity, uh, convert you to be hung on a Jehovah's Witness. Well, Christians often do this as well. Christians will often stand in town centres and have signs. They might try and hand out Bibles um, at school. You've seen that the Bibles handed out by the Gideons, which uh, are behind student reception for some reason, uh, or were, I think, think they're there anymore, uh, that some people manage to get hold of. What is that? Is that just a box? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Oh, you were, n were you a friendly man? Okay, you don't seem like a bad guy. Are you a child? Hey, you're an ugly child? Sorry, no offence. You've got a big old nose. I know, that's very rude of me. You've got quite a big nose as well. What's that? A bell? Oh, crikey. Sorry, Rosa. Made you jump, darling. Um, so evangelism... Uh, you're spreading the faith. Why do you want to spread the faith to other people? Well, some Christians believe that if the whole world was Christian, it would increase the level of harmony, that the world being all Christian would be a more harmonious world, there'd be more peace, there'd be less murder, because people would get along with the same faith. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I, I, you know, there are Christian nations that attack each other, and there are Christians who kill each other. But this is a Christian idea, that if you created a world where everyone was Christian, it would be a much more peaceful place. Okay. <sighs> Let's have a look. Okay, that was this the cow house where the cows are the other side. Been in the cow house. I know what that one does. Okay, that's the big fella who wanders around slowly. Let's have a look in your house. What are you? Brewing stands. No idea. Don't know what that means. But good on you. Um, how do we spread the religion to these people? Well, you do evangelism. And you go, oh, this is like the other man's house. So have you got a box of stuff I can have? <gasps> oh my God. Snowballs. Okay. Uh, why? Let's grab things. Potatoes, potatoes. Beetroot seeds. Well, now I have to work out how to plant things. Coal. 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 Beetroot seeds. Snow. Excellent. Snowball. Coal. 
bread, bread, snowball, potato, coal, mine. Can I mine the box? <gasps> I am so, so I'm so sorry, mate. Is that your box? Oh man, I'm. S I don't know what you're doing to that cow. That seems private. I'm leaving that situation alone. And they've got sheep. Oh, where's my church? I've got myself all turned round. Is it over that hill? Oh, there's a tree there. I might be able to get that tree in a second as well. Let's go back to my church and see if I put the box in the church. That seems sensible. Then I can put things in the box and I won't lose them all the time. There's my church. Um, so missions is when you go to a foreign nation to try and convert those people to your faith. So, example, if I decided that the people of Argentina needed converting to Christianity, they probably wouldn't. Argentina is a mainly Christian country anyway. Or uh, I heard about a group of people living in the Brazilian rainforest. That's a better idea. And I was like, oh, this tribe in the Brazilian rainforest, they're not Christian. I'm going to trek into the Brazilian rainforest and try and convert them to Christianity. That would be a mission. I'd be on a mission. What do I do? Well, I try and um, convince people uh, to, to, that, that Christianity is the best faith. I try and convince people that uh, they should listen to Jesus and I try and show them a good life. How do I do that? Well, I'd often do good deeds while I'm there. I'd show them via actions um, th what to do to be a good Christian. And part of that would be maybe like building a church or building a school or building a hospital. Through those actions, I'm hoping that people would see, oh, this is the goodness and joy that Christianity can bring. Okay, I'm quite hungry at the moment, so let's see if I can... Right. I haven't got any more rotten flesh. Can I eat the potato? Okay. Give me a little one. I'd expect more filling than that. Can I eat the bread? Oh, well, that filled it all up. Okay. Snowball, throw. Okay, let's throw it at my crucifix. Oh, that's cool. I've only got five of them left. I really want to throw a snowball at a rabbit. And maybe the rabbit, the rabbit won't be too hurt. Right, aim, fire. Oh, okay. Uh, fire? Oh, whoops. Oh, sorry. Oh, he went red and ran away. He didn't like that. Okay, sorry. Um, that's probably a bit mean. Okay. Right, mine. Mine. Uh, okay, put the box place. <laughs> now I have a box. Put my mud in it so I can always close my door. Put the bone in it. My last snowball. My seeds. I don't have to plant seeds yet. Maybe just put them on the ground. Actually, let's see if I can just put them on the ground. No. Mine. Plant. Plant. No. Okay. No, not worked out seeds yet. Uh, so that's a mission. Going to a place. So if I was in my little church here. Here we go. And I saw that village over there and I was like, oh, I'm going to try and convert them to Christianity. I would be evangelizing, spreading my religion to them. And, go ow, fell down the steps again. Oh, how am I hungry again? And you just ate a loaf of bread. And I'll go over there and that would be my mission would be to go and convert them. Okay, it's where we get like mission from computer games from, the word mission. Uh, the people who go on those are missionaries. Okay, they're called missionaries. Okay, um, that's obviously a nice one. Okay. Um, another topic that can come up is about the role of the church. Okay, the role of the church is what is the point of the church. So I've got my church here that I've built. Okay, what is the point of it? Okay, now that's the literal church, but actually, what the question means by the role of the church is the church as an organisation, the church as a group. What's the point of it? It's the sun going down again. Oh my lord! Right, let's get in my house. Oh, I've got wood now. I can make my door out of wood, and then I can go to bed. And then hopefully the monsters won't come. Okay, can I go to bed already? <laughs> Excellent. And in the morning, the monsters all get killed by sunlight, so that's fine. Right. Not sure this is the best tactic. I'm sure I'll have to ask some students and see if they've got anything I'm doing horribly wrong. Break that. Okay. And no monsters today. <laughs> Right, let's see. Okay, what was the crafting button? Okay, fire charge, torch, equipment, construction. 
spruce wood planks. Okay, we'll try some of this in a second. So the role of the church is to do many things. Firstly, the church is the people who go to church. Okay, is that good? I've now made all my, I've made spruce wood planks. Oh no, that wasn't that button. That button. I've got my spruce wood, I've got my spruce wood planks. I've got my uh, church. How am I going to help people with this? So my church isn't just me. It's all the people who come to my church. The group is known as the church. So firstly, I want to care for my community. So I'd go over to my local community, which is my little village over there. And I'd be like, hey, have you got any poor and needy people? They can come to my church and I may give them a food bank. Oh, hello, rabbit. Hello, rabbit. I'm sorry. I've sort of taken over your house. I've no rabbit. Um, I could give them a food bank and be like, oh, here is like the role of the church is to make sure my community is cared for. Or maybe I give them spiritual advice. Maybe the people in the village are struggling and I go over there and I go, oh, here, this is how you become uh, a better Christian. Um, okay, let's go in that crafting menu again. So I've got no construction, no equipment, item. Oh, I can build items this time. The crafting table. Now, is that the same as the table that's in my house already? Do I need an those? I don't think so. And surely, if I'm going to craft things, I do it on the crafting table. Is that the same as that? They look the same. Yeah, this looks like where I make things. Okay, okay. Make a chest, make a bowl. Can I make... Oh, can I in the bowl? Okay, so I made bowls. Can I get water and then baptise people with it? Oh, hello, bear. You were pretty chill, so I'm going to trust you this time. Um, so I might bring people into the church and evangelise them because I might try and the role of the church might be okay, uh, mine with this no, no you can't fill the bowl full of water to baptise people that's a shame, I thought I had a clever plan then I was going to throw water at people um, my church might be to bring people in and to, to evangelise them, to spread the religion to them, to try and save them now you might be thinking well that's not a good thing for a church to be doing, trying to convert people, oh if I've got snow can I put it there and hold my church up Oh, excellent. How do I get more snow then? Because when I just mine it, it does this. Hmm. This is a conundrum. Maybe I need a spade. Maybe I can make a spade. Okay. Ah, haha, -ha, spade. Okay, so I need... I need sticks. I saw sticks. So sticks. Sticks. Okay, I have eight sticks. I've only got 13 bricks left, so I'll go to this one. Haha, <laughs> a spade. Okay, okay, see. And can I now dig snow? Oh, I've got snowballs. Not what I expected, but... Okay, I can throw the snowballs at the monsters, maybe. This is working out nicely. Um, I might also have my uh, church uh, put on events to bring the community together. That might be a nice thing. I might raise money for charity generally. Um, I'll hold Christian events at the church. For example, I'll make a little cross here uh, for my church. Uh, there you go. Another cross. We've got to make lots of crucifixes everywhere to remember Jesus at my church. Excellent. Okay, remembering Jesus wherever we go. Um, I hold weddings at the church, hold baptisms at the church, looking after my people's spiritual side. That's the role of the church. The role of the church can be charity-based, looking after people. The role of the church can be spiritual-based, looking after their spirituality, helping people. Oh, my neighbour needs help um, with their divorce. They're going to get divorced. Oh, they go to the church and the church convinces them not to get divorced because it's a sin and I give them advice. I'm like, no, be a good Christian. Listen to what Jesus would do. He would not get divorced. Christianity. Um oh, uh, the church has like uh, a meeting for uh, Alcoholics Anonymous at the church because we're trying to help the people. Christianity, these are nice things, okay? I'm not mocking, that is a good thing that church can do. I'm not a Christian, but that is a nice thing that church do, and church often do. Churches run most of the country's food banks. That is amazing, okay? So you can do that. And then you can talk about other things the church do. And one that you always seem to remember really well, certainly in my classes, is the street pastors okay the street pastors are the people who go out on nights out and make sure that people who are partying and often drinking are safe that is literally loving thy neighbor okay love your neighbor they're going out and they're helping people in public even though those people are drunk and drinking and being silly 
they are helping them and looking after them. Why is that? Because God told them to love one another and they're loving one another even if that person is engaging in behaviour they don't agree with. That is a loving thing to do. They're also keeping people safe. That's an important thing to do because God wants us all to be safe according to Christians. God wants us all to be safe and to be happy. So if they do that, then people will be safe and happy and that is a sensible thing to do. Um, other groups you could talk about, you could talk about CAFOD. Uh, CAFOD is a Catholic group that works globally to, to end poverty uh, and to receive uh, long-term sources of food and income. They sort of help people to help themselves, another massive charity. The church organises that, okay? Um, these are good examples. Street pastors is a really nice, easy one. Street pastors. They're Christians, they help people. For some reason, you lot always remember they give out people flip-flops. It always seems to stick in your heads, but that is the thing they do. They give out flip-flops, they make sure people have got some food, they make sure people get home safely, they make sure drunk people don't pass out. Oh, I never looked at what this is. Open. Furnace. You put coal in a furnace. I don't know what I can cook in the furnace. A potato? <gasps> Am I cooking a potato? Am I going to get chips? Oh my god, I'm going to get chips. This is amazing. Baked potato. Makes more sense. But, and then can I eat the baked potato? Of course, eat. That's amazing. I'm so happy. Right, build something. Okay, okay, sword. I'll have a sword. An axe. For chopping down trees. Axe. Pickaxe. For snow, I really want to get more snow. Okay, where's the pickaxe? No, it's not down there. Okay, there's the pickaxe. Take half. Okay, is that fine? Uh, I'll have it instead of the bowl. The bowl was a silly thing. Okay, pickaxe. Can I pickaxe the snow? No. How do I get the snow to be snow like that? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, I'll work that out at some point. Um, why do Christians do all this? Why do Christians want to help each other? Well, firstly, they've got love thy neighbour. God tells them to be loving. They're trying to do it to get into heaven. But how do they know these are the right things to do to help each other? Well, Jesus told a very famous story. They call it the parable of the sheep and the goats. The parable of the sheep and the goats goes, we must be more like sheep than goats. What is Jesus on about when he says that? Sheep listen, sheep are obedient, and sheep follow what Jesus said. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, help the poor. Um... When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. Uh, when I know, like, you let me in when I know where to stay. So he's saying that when you help others, you're helping Jesus, okay? That Jesus is everywhere and Jesus is in all things because Jesus is part of God. And so when we help Jesus, we're helping each other. Um, what does, uh, what, why, um, what does he say about the goats? Well, the goats are stubborn. The goats do whatever they want. I was hoping to think, oh, we have seen some sheep. Let's go and find those sheep. Say hello to those sheep again, because then I can tell the story of the sheep and the goats with the sheep present. Oh, hello. Um, I have a sword now. I don't want to hit you with a sword. I'm not going to hit you with a sword. I hope you appreciate that. Where was the village? I think it was just up here. Yeah, this looks like it. Um, so I'm going to go and find the sheep. So the sheep are obedient. The sheep do what they're told. I wonder if they've got goats in the village as well, because they had cows. Have they got goats? Oh, it's there. So the sheep are obedient, they do what they're told, and they follow what Jesus says, okay? The goats don't listen to Jesus. They are selfish, they do whatever they like. Like goats are meant to be sort of, I guess in Jesus' story, like ignorant and they're pig-headed. Um, not pig-headed as in actually they have the heads of pigs, but as in they just do whatever they want. They're, they're, they're selfish and stubborn. So you don't want to be like the goats. The sheep go to heaven, the goats go to hell, okay? So... God has told us to look after each other. Oh, there's the big fellow again. Where were those sheep? More cows? Ah, oh, hello, sheep. So you... What is that? What was that? Inventory? Raw rabbit? Did one of you die? I'm so sorry, guys. Huh? Was it the ferret? Did you kill one of the... Rabbits? Stay away from my rabbits. Ferret. Right. Stupid ferret. Um, hey, sheep. I feel bad. I wonder if I, I can probably eat the sheep, but they definitely belong to these people. And if I want to make you all part of my church later, I'd best not kill all your animals. Oh, the sun's going down. Can I chill out in one of your houses? Uh, one of you got a bed. 
It seems going to bed means I miss all the trouble. No. Anyone got a bed I can stay in? Oh, we're going to have to do the old wake him up trick. Oh, I stole your box, didn't I, mate? You're sleeping with your eyes open. You're not asleep, you're just pretending. Any danger? Sorry, mate. That was really rude of me. Um. So, Adventure's Mission talks about that. Ah, persecution and reconciliation. These are frustrating topics because they don't sound like they'll be part of Christian practices. Because it's not like a thing in the other senses. Um, it doesn't just jump out of you. Persecution is when someone's being picked upon. And you're like, well, how is that a practice? Christians shouldn't be persecuting people. And it, that's exactly it. They're saying Christians shouldn't persecute people. So how do they help people who are being persecuted? A Christian practice should be to assist those who are being persecuted. Why? Because God created us all equally. God made man in his own image. What does that mean? If we're made in man's own in God's own image, then we're all equal. God created us all equally. God created us all the same. Oh, oh, oh that's one of those blocks that I want to build my church out of. They won't mind if I take that, surely. Oh, it just disappeared. Oh, it just disappeared. Oh. I still don't know how to get snow in a pile and make the square out of it. And get snowballs. That doesn't really help me. Um, where's my church? There's my church. Um, so persecution. So if I was to go around and pick on all these villagers, that is persecuting them, especially if I don't do it for any reason. I persecute these villagers. How do I help them? Well, I help them by praying for them. First one is the easiest one. I help them by offering them assistance. Uh, I, I go to where they are and I offer them help. Uh, I help them by um, uh, offering them uh, shelter as refugees if they're fleeing their country. I go, come and stay here where it is safe. I offer them sanctuary, okay? Um, I, offer, I offer assistance. Oh, there's two more ferrets over there. Um, I offer them help by... Um, what's the thing I was going to say, protesting against those people who are persecuting them. So if I believe uh, that uh, Ukrainians are being persecuted at the moment as a church, I might protest against that. The, the Church of England have been uh, outspoken against the, uh, the invasion of Ukraine, very outspoken against it. That is a good sign because that suggests that, you know, the Christian people can be united against this movement and hopefully help the people of Ukraine. If you know, and I, I do agree they need help. I mean, you know, I don't want to get political on this, but, you know, I think that's a particularly controversial stance. Um, and then you could talk about how some Christians have been persecuted because of their faith. Christians were historically persecuted. Why should we help the persecuted? Well, you could argue that Jesus was persecuted. Jesus was picked on because of something he believed in. He was treated very badly. And Christians, therefore, should not persecute others because they should look at the example of Jesus and go, oh, it was wrong when Jesus was persecuted again, so we shouldn't persecute others. And we should help those who are being persecuted like, we should, like people should have helped Jesus. And also, but, sorry, and... How did Jesus deal with being persecuted? Well, he didn't use violence. He didn't use anger. I was going to go and get another tree, wasn't I? There was a tree up by the village. Sorry, I forgot what I was doing. And I got my new axe. That's what I was up to. Um, Jesus, when he was being persecuted, he didn't lash out. He didn't fight them. Oh, those leaves are still sort of there for that tree I did. Oh, they're falling apart still. That's weird. Uh, There's one of the trees. So, snowball. Wooden pickaxe. I think an axe was going to be the thing for dropping a tree down. Peel bark? Peel bark. Was that a good thing to do? How did that help? I don't know. I don't know how that helped. Do I have the bark now? I don't seem to. I'm just going to chop the tree down. Does that still give me the, the blocks? Yeah, okay. don't really know what that was. I peeled all the bark off. I feel like I just tortured the tree for no reason. It's like I peeled... Ow! Silly thing. It's like I peeled its skin off before I killed it. Um, so people have been persecuted against. After there has been persecution in the place, and Jesus, oh, sorry, Jesus forgave the people persecuting him. Um, as he's up on the cross being persecuted, he says, um, "Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do." Now that means he's forgiving the Romans for for persecuting him. So he's been persecuted, and he forgives those who persecute him. He forgives those who persecute him. That's amazing. He's meant to be all forgiving, so that's a great thing. But it's a way you can talk in the exam about why we should forgive those who persecute us. Okay, We forgive those who persecute us because Jesus forgave those who persecuted him. And Christians want to be like Jesus. They often ask, what would Jesus do? Where's the sun in the sky? How long have I got? Okay, it's right above me. That's fine. Okay. Very confusing. Right. Um, okay, I've got more wood, so let's go back to my little house and see what I can build there. 
that going to hurt me? No, fine. Okay, I can drop that far, but I can't drop much further. Once we have been persecuted against, how do we repair that relationship? Well, I mentioned this word once earlier when we talked about the um, sacraments. Reconciliation. Reconciliation is making peace between groups. Now, in my mind, there's two major ways we can think about reconciliation. We can think about it in terms of reconciliation of personal relationships. Um, for example, this is not true. Me and my wife are breaking up. Not true. Uh, and the priest convinces us to stay together. That is reconciliation. We have reconciled our differences. We have made up. We are not going to get a divorce. Why is that good? Because it's a good thing not to get divorced. Divorce is bad, according to the church. What God has joined together, let no man pull apart. So that would be a bad thing. So Jesus wants us to stay together. So we reconcile. Jesus is also called the Prince of Peace, so we should promote reconciliation and global conflicts. So, not to once again talk about too many political things, but the war in Ukraine at the moment. As that war finishes, Christians will promote reconciliation. They will promote peace between the two nations so we can live in harmony again. God does not want people to die. He wants people to live in peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, so reconciliation is promoted. And then you can talk about how there is reconciliation between God and mankind. What does that mean? Well, God was punishing us for the sins of Adam and Eve, but the death of Jesus was the reconciliation. The death of Jesus was us making harmony between God and mankind again. The, the cloth fell in the temple. That suggested that heaven's been opened, and that was the ultimate act of reconciliation. The, the, the gap that was between human beings and God has been broken, and we could return to heaven again. We could be together. That reconciliation, we could find true forgiveness. Are there any organisations that work towards that now? I'm worried the sun's going to go down, so I'm just going to block myself in my house. So, I've only got one thing of dirt. Oh no, I put dirt in the box. So I get my dirt out the box. I put my dirt on my pile of dirt. Mud, mud, locked in the house. Let's see what we can build. Okay, I can build one more sword. Okay, interesting. So that's reconciliation. Are there any organisations that do this? Yeah, there's one big famous one called Corrie Mila. Where is Corrie Mila? Corrie Mila is in Ireland, okay? Um, we're in Northern Ireland, and it's it's a, a place that promotes peace and historically promoted peace between the two different Christian groups in Ireland, between Catholics and the and the uh, and the, the Church of England and the Northern Irish, okay? So and the Anglicans. So there'd been conflict between Northern Ireland and Ireland and Corrie Mila was a place to come together and bring peace. How would it come together and bring peace? Well, the idea was that in Jesus, they had more in common than they had apart. That if they had to listen to Jesus, they would have more in common and therefore they would be able to find peace. So they shouldn't think of how the differences in their faiths, Catholics and Anglicans, which there are differences, uh, divide them. They shouldn't think about the division. They should think about what brings them together. And Corrie Mila is literally like a little tiny village. It's a peace centre where people brought it together to reconcile their differences. It used to be mainly people from Ireland, but now actually they go from people from international conflicts all over the world. So you might bring Jewish people from Israel and uh, Muslim people from Palestine and bring them together to make peace. Oh, I was still cooking here. Oh, I've got three more potatoes. Oh, that's excellent. Can I cook snowballs? No. That was maybe the stupidest thing I've ever thought. Oh, can I cook my rabbit? Yes. Um, so Corrie Mila's uh, a good idea. Uh, they promote interfaith dialogue, religions talking, and... Oh, there's my rabbit. And uh, religions talking and solving their problems. The final topic that will come up will be some sort of question on festivals. I think festivals is going to come up on the Muslim paper and the Christian paper. So how's it going to come up on the Christian paper? Well... I really think it could be the 12 mark question and I think it could be like Christmas is the most important Christian festival and ah I knocked the microphone over I'm so sorry um I don't think that's a bad question at all I think you can talk about firstly you might want to talk about how Christian Christmas is celebrated um so you can talk about the nativity scene that people put together don't forget pick things that are Christian about how Christmas is celebrated don't pick things like um like Christmas trees. Christmas trees aren't particularly a Christian idea. Or Christmas cards. And I wouldn't even go as far as bringing Santa Claus in, even though you can go, oh, it's St. Nicholas, it's a Christian saint. I think that's going to get you into the weeds. I'd pick things that are very Jesus-based, because to talk about things that represent Jesus. Christmas remembers his birth, his incarnation, the fact that Jesus came to earth, God came to earth as Jesus. So the nativity scene. Some Christians put nativity scenes in their house or act out nativity scenes as part of a play to remember the birth of Jesus, okay? Very important, okay? Carol services. They sing carols. Why are they singing carols? Well, they're singing songs worshipping Jesus. Okay, I can make more planks. Slab. I don't know if I need slab. What's all this? 
A door? Yeah, okay, and the door just needs, I just need more of those blocks. So if I build more blocks, oh, I can have a door. Okay, how do I put my door in the house? Right, oh no, yes, that was it. There's my, I've got three doors. Okay, put it there instead of the stick. Door, oh no. Oh, I have a door to my house. <laughs> I have a door. Hello bear. Sun's going down. Right, now to go for a sleep in my house with a door. You can only sleep at night. Oh, it's almost night. Right, I'll wait for the sun to go down. Hey bear, you all right? You want a door? There's a door for you, mate. Knock, knock. Who's there? Bear. Bear who? I don't have a joke that finishes that. Right, night bear. Um, what other things happen at uh, Christmas? Well, Christians go to midnight mass, okay? So the night before Christmas, they go to midnight mass to remember that Jesus is entering the world, okay? Mass is communion, going for the bread and the wine. They go to church that night. They have Bible readings. They sing carols. They're remembering that. What happens during Christmas Day that's really religious? Giving gifts. How does that link to Christianity? Jesus was given gifts uh, by the three wise men. It showed that he was worshipped by kings. Okay, it showed he was worshipped by kings. Okay, at the nativity you have kings there and you have shepherds there to show that Jesus is worshipped by the people in the highest positions of power and the people you know who are meant to be in the lower positions. I'm not having a go at shepherds, but that's the, the symbology behind it. Uh, Christians give to charity in this time. They pay a tithing. Ten percent of their earnings go to charity. Sometimes many Christians. Christians don't do this, but many Christians do. A tithing uh, suggests that they are a, a good time of peace and being thankful for what God has given them. Okay, right, I've still got more wood, so what can I build out of this? What else do I need? That's a lot of stuff, I don't know what it is. What's this? Oh, oh, I just need this. Okay, I can make snow snow block with four snowballs. Oh, well, this is excellent. I can make my big church now. I'm going to make a big icy church. So I just need to dig up lots of snow and I can make a big icy church. Oh, excellent. Okay, so... Remove you. Oh, this is going to be excellent. I cannot wait to make my big ice church. Right. I might build it next to that water and have you as my little first church and then build a bigger church over here. Because I don't know how to make this one bigger. I've only got four blocks so far. So let's mark out the four corners of my church. So when I have my first church service, so this is going to be my holy water maybe. So I'll have this at the back of the church. So churches are traditionally like crucifix shaped inside. So they're, they're the main aisle and they have a bit that runs across it. So we'll have to make it sort of like cross shaped. So I'll mark out my four corners. So I'll have like, hey bear, are you drinking the water? You little ledge. Right, and then we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we'll have ten across, and then we'll have ten this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, well, I might need to work out how to flatten this out. Oh, well. we'll work that out as we get to it. And in line with that one, in line with that one, there. Does that seem right? Is that in line? I think that's one across accidentally. Oh, I should have dug up with a spade. Anyway, what are we going to compare Christmas to? We're going to compare Christmas to Easter. Easter is obviously the remembrance of how Jesus died. Oh, hey, you bear. Love you. Um, I don't know why I'm kissing the bear. Seems an odd thing to do now I've done it. Um, so Easter is a celebration of how Jesus died, okay? Um, Jesus dies obviously on the cross. Oh, I could like make a path from my church up to the village. That's a nice idea. So let's clear the snow in a nice path to my village. And so the villagers can come down here and come to church. Um, so Easter is obviously the remembrance of Jesus' death, okay? So Jesus dies on the Friday, but actually Christ... What happened? Oh, my spade ran out. Okay, I need to make more spades. Okay, this is doable. This is all doable. Um, hey, rabbits. Love you too. Mwah, mwah. Nice rabbits. It's quite late at night. I'm quite tired. I think I've gone a little weird. I do apologise. Um, 
So Christians actually begin the remembrance of Easter a week beforehand. Okay, a week beforehand is it's called Holy Week. So the first um, Sunday, the Sunday before Easter. So if you've got Easter Sunday, is that is, there's one bear there? Is there another bear over there? Is that the same bear? I don't know. Door, door. So please, my door. Right. Can I make more spades? No. What do I need? Where's spades? I need more sticks. I made sticks in here. Sticks. Oh, now I need more spades. I need more blocks. Oh. Mm, blocks. Okay, I'm doing this. So on Palm Sunday is the first Sunday of Easter. Palm Sunday is a week before Easter Sunday. Palm Sunday is remembering when Jesus rode into Jerusalem triumphant. He returns to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is sort of this massive city. It's massively important. He arrives on a donkey. Why is it called Palm Sunday then? Why is it not called Donkey Sunday? Because all of the uh, Christians place palm leaves down in his path um, so he can walk over them. So he's arriving like a king. Uh, so how do Christians remember this? Well, the week before um, Christmas, ah, oh, here's my spade. In fact, why not I make two spades for digging up snow? Um, Christians are given a palm cross, a cross in the shape of palms, and these are kept till the next year, and you burn them on Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday is a Wednesday you don't need to know too much about, but they put the ashes on their head in a cross shape, okay? So you want to keep these. Um, so that's a Sunday before. So Sunday, you're going to get your palm cross and save it for a year. Thursday, or oh, let's go outside and dig snow. Sorry, I've got distracted. Thursday is called Maundy Thursday. So Maundy Thursday is the Thursday of Easter, and it's a day you're going to uh, remember the Last Supper. The Last Supper happened on Maundy Thursday. Okay, so Maundy Thursday happens on the Last Supper. Uh, happens on the Thursday, and it's the Last Supper. You're remembering that Jesus had this Last Supper with his disciples. Uh, that's the one where he gives them the bread and wine and says, "Look, remember me. Have this bread and wine." And it's the one where he is sort of like aware that Judas is going to betray him. He's like, look, you're going to betray me, Judas. And he, he puts the sort of bread in Judas' mouth as it's symbol that he knows Judas is going to betray him. And it's where he tells Peter that, Peter, you're going to deny you know me. And Peter's like, I will not. I'd never do that. And then Peter does that. My spade broke already. Man, spades are weak in this world. That is ridiculous. I can't even shovel like a decent driveway. Okay, that's a nice path to get to my church. Um... So uh, on Maundy, uh, on Maundy Thursday, uh, a weird thing you can mention is a queen gives out Maundy money uh, to the poor as a symbol of like Jesus' instructions to love one another. So the queen gives out money on that day. Um, uh, you'd, you'd often have a mass at church, which you call the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper, it's often called. And so Christians would often go to church on this day and hold a mass. Uh, and that's a symbol that like they're remembering Jesus's sort of sacrifice at this time. Um, right? Do I need to sort of like? No, oh, I may have built this church in the wrong place. So I think I'm going to build my other one there. I need to go and back to my table and build the snow brick. Sorry, what's going on? My hi there. Um, then you've got Good Friday. So he, Jesus is uh, he, Maundy Thursday. He's arrested. He's betrayed. Good Friday is the day Jesus dies, okay? It's Good Friday because it's good that heaven is opening. Don't forget, Jesus' death is sad for, for in terms of that it's shocking, but Jesus' death symbolises and shows the opening of heaven. Uh, on Good Friday, colourful items are normally removed from the church. You want to make the church a, a place of respect at that point. Um, no candles are lit, uh, symbolising that Jesus has died, okay? Uh, processions are led through towns and cities remembering, and often the stations of the cross are remembered. So people might actually have, like, uh, sort of paintings or actions showing the sort of stages of Jesus's, um Death, uh, the stations of the cross, the, the sort of stages sort of him being whipped, him carrying the cross, him being nailed to the cross, these stages of his life, the remembering of his death, sorry. Then Easter Sunday is um, sort of the celebration. Uh, and on Easter Sunday is the day you're remembering that Jesus rose from the dead, and that's a special celebration. There are some flowers in church, there's big um, sort of like. Um, big church services, special hymns are sung. You're celebrating on Easter Sunday because Jesus has risen. That is your celebration. So the question might be, oh, which is more important, Christmas or Easter? 
I think there's the easiest argument is if you're coming to that 12 mark is go Christmas is more important because it's uh, celebrated with greater numbers of people because non-Christians celebrate it as well so you could say that brings the world together that's always a nice thing shows you really understand the sort of festival you could say Christmas is more important because it's a time when Christians can remember the birth of Jesus and his existence on earth and they can exchange gifts as a way of showing their respect for that story and then I'd go like, oh, hang on, Easter's more important because at Easter it's when heaven opened and Christians can remember this important event when heaven opened uh, on Good Friday. It's a sign of giving respect to the fact that Jesus died for them. But my conclusion, I would say that both festivals are equally important. And the most important thing is that you're a good Christian, not that you celebrate in a certain way. You know, I would I would phrase it like that and be not like that. But I'd, I'd take on those ideas that these festivals should be equally important. You don't have to do that. You could obviously argue one is more important than the other. But I think that's the argument that I would go for. Oh, that just flashed me. I don't know why. Um, I think those are all the major topics. And I don't think I can play any longer because I'm going to fall asleep. Uh, but I'm getting there of building my church. It, it should be a gr I've just left two doors outside. That bear's no longer looking after my doors. Um, so I've got, you know, we're making some progress. We've got our crosses and we've got our little mini tiny church that I live in. So it's more like a little monk's house at the moment. But long term, I think this will be a good plan. Um, Thanks for watching. You've got your exam on Monday. I hope that goes really well. I'll be putting up some more videos over the weekend just going through quotes, going through Christian quotes and Muslim quotes, and hopefully doing some practice questions as well, okay? Um, thanks very much, guys, for following along with these if you have been, and uh, good luck in the exam, my darlings.